Welcome to a new video. I'm Verena Borel. I'm an evolutionary astrologer and an astrologer in evolution. And I'm very happy to, yeah, say hello to you and invite you to a short journey into Sagittarius season of 2024. Um, yeah, I will talk about Sagittarius season, the energies, the transits, the overarching topics of this solar month. And just some dates right at the beginning of this video. Um, I give you some astronomical dates, some transits, um, and then I will yeah dive into the topics and themes that might be important for your personal life, for your growth, for your journey in this next upcoming four weeks. So the sun moves into Sagittarius on November 22nd. So I live in Austria, so um, I give you the European times. Maybe you have to adapt them to your time zone if you live in the United States or in Asia or somewhere else in the world. So the sun moves into Sagittarius on November 22nd. Then we have a sun square to Saturn and Pisces on November 23rd. On November 24th, Mars also um, ingresses into Sagittarius. We have a full moon in four degree Gemini on November 27th. And then on, November, on December 8th, the sun in Sagittarius trines Chiron retrograde in Aries. We have a new moon in Sagittarius on December 13th in 20 degrees Sagittarius. And on the same day, on December 13th, Mercury stations retrograde in 8 degree Capricorn. And then the sun trines the North Node on December 15th. And we have a sun square to Neptune in Pisces on December 17th. So these are just some transits that I will talk about and weave into this, yeah, this short Sagittarius reflection. So for me, Sagittarius season after Scorpio season feels always like leaving a cage and seeing the silver lining on the horizon again. But it's really important that we do our Scorpio work um, when we want to live Sagittarius in a truly expansive way and not not get lost in too many opportunities. So Sagittarius is a mutable fire sign. And in Sagittarius, it's really about our life is a journey in Sagittarius, a journey and a series of opportunities for growth. So in Sagittarius, it's all about making new experiences. And by making new experiences, we expand our horizon and we find yeah, we make new experiences, so we learn, we grow, we expand. It's about experience-based knowledge. We gain new wisdom, we gain new, new knowledge, and we find our truth. And in Sagittarius, it's so important to, um, yeah, to be very aware that our truth constantly changes and evolves because we are making new experiences all the time. So the trouble of a shadow or a more destructive way to live Sagittarius energy might be that you get lost in too many opportunities so that you run from one opportunity to the next and completely lose track and actually have a little bit of FOMO, fear of missing out, fear of missing out of experiencing things. And we can really, it's often when, when we experience these running from one opportunity to another opportunity. It's often because we try to avoid to do our Scorpio work. And in Scorpio, it's all about really becoming aware of our deep fears, of our deep desires, doing the inward work, the shadow work. And this is really important that we know or that we are conscious, that we make the unconscious conscious, as Sigi Young said, Jung, said um so it's really important um when we want to consciously live Sagittarius energy and really expand and make new experiences and don't lose track it's really important to know about our deep desires and also our deep fears 
Because when we know about our deep desires and fears, Scorpio, um, our path, um, yeah, we have direct, we have a direction and um, our path becomes meaningful because we are actually seeking and yeah, we know what is important for us. We know what we truly desire. And we also know where, where we are afraid of. So we can choose our direction with more consciousness and it feels more meaningful. And we don't get lost in meaningless tons of things we can do in this lifetime. So this is the energy of Sagittarius after Scorpio. And I have the feeling that um, we have some uh, Venus, Venus will square Pluto, and then we'll move into Scorpio um, between December 3rd and December 5th. So I have the feeling that there is this scorpionic energy still in the field, especially in the first half of Sagittarius season, that we it's really about um, being very aware of what you truly need and desire and not get lost in too many opportunities and this fear of missing out. And also, what is really important, there are not only these Venus, Pluto, Square, Venus moves into Scorpio and stays in Scorpio for Sagittarius season, not only this indicator of an energy that is very inwardly focused, but also this year, the ruler of Sagittarius, Jupiter, is in Taurus. And Jupiter is in Taurus and retrograde in Taurus until the end of the year. So for the whole Sagittarius season. So Jupiter in Taurus, especially retrograde in Taurus. Taurus is an Earth sign. sign. It's a fixed sign. It's a yin sign. So it's all about our body wisdom. It's about our deep knowledge. It's about gnosis. It's about what feels right, what feels true. And also during Sagittarius season on um, December 13th, at the day of the new moon in Sagittarius, Mercury will also station retrograde in 8 degree Capricorn. So Mercury, the the polar sign so mercury is the ruler of gemini which is the polar the opposite sign to sagittarius so we have jupiter retrograde in taurus and mercury also stationing retrograde in an earth sign in capricorn and for me this really shows that this sagittarius season is not so much about running hastily into new experiences, but also really doing the inner work, listening to our body, listening to our body wisdom, listening to the rhythm of the earth, slowing down, um, looking inside. And there is a huge emphasis on the inner guru, our inner guidance versus gurus and teacher figures outside. So for me, it feels really, I have this image of the mutable fire energy of Sagittarius moving cyclical between your, your internal reality and the, the external world. So it's really a constant flow, I think, in the next weeks of, and being very aware to stay balanced between external stimuli and going and doing things, making new experiencing, allowing yourself to open up to new opportunities. And on the other hand, really allow yourself to reflect, to feel into these possibilities. Are they really aligned? Does they Do they feel good? Not just, oh, sounds interesting, I'm doing it, but more like, give me a second, I need to feel into that, I need to yeah, get in contact with my inner guidance. Is this aligned? Is this meaningful for me? Does that feel good? And also, is this within my somatic and physical capacity? Do I have the time for that? 
Do I have the energy to do that? And are these opportunities really serving my long-term visions? Sagittarius is about expansion. It's about vision. But with Jupiter and Sagittarius, uh, with Jupiter, the ruler of Sagittarius and Taurus, it's really a reminder that at the moment, it's about, yeah, laying the foundations for visions that are serving us over a longer period of time and are sustainable and are in, al in, and are in alignment with our values, Jupiter and Taurus. So it's really important for the next week's um, Sagittarius season ends on, give me a second, the sun moves into Capricorn this year on December 22nd. So between um, November 22nd and December 22nd, I think it's especially important because we have Mars also in Sagittarius. So it's really important to, yeah, act make new experiences, but really check back with your own inner guidance, with your intuition, with your body. Um, is this in alignment with my values? Is this in, in alignment with my long-term visions and goals? Um, does that feel good? Is it, do I have the capacity? Because sometimes, and struggle of my life i have many planets in sagittarius and also in aries um there are so many great opportunities which can, which bring which could bring us expansion and at the same time we don't have the physical capacity we don't have the energy for that we don't have the time for that we don't have the money for that so it's really important to find a balance here between your your excitement and your desires and your capacity what is actually possible for you right now and this year is intense we have pluto and a square to the lunar nodes for the whole year so there that reflects how much transformation how much death and rebirth we experience already the whole fucking year so it's okay if you are tired it's okay if you say no to an opportunity even though it might feel very, very exciting. So I cannot tell you what to do. It's really a part of listening to yourself. What is in alignment with you? Is it in alignment to say, okay, I can sleep at another day and I? it feels really, really important that I um, go on this journey and make this new ex experience or does your body say no and you really know okay i trust that other opportunities will find me and it's okay to rest now and don't go on this trip trip in a literal way or more in an yeah in the way of trip opportunities new things that you might yeah that you can do and i think that there is this what i said this really dynamic between inner guru and inner listening and um making new experiences there's also i think um we might experience some pressure that we must know it all that we maybe think that others expect from us, that we know the answer and know exactly what the way is. Um, Saturn squares the Sagittarius sun right at the beginning of Sagittarius season. So I think with this Saturn square, there can be a lot of pressure around, okay, I have to know my path, I have to know the answer. And then, um, a couple of days later on the new moon uh, on the full moon in gemini i think it's really about it's okay to have many questions and no answer it's okay that you don't know it's all about this year is all about letting go of what you thought you know and 
open up to new possibilities, to new opportunities, to new self-concepts. So I think there is a huge opportunity for curiosity, for openness, for really allowing yourself to let go of certain beliefs, of certain worldviews, of certain um, self-concepts, and really be curious. And sometimes being, yeah, sometimes showing up with integrity means to say that you don't know. And that's okay too. Sometimes integrity Saturn means to say that you don't have the answer. And sometimes it's really self-responsible to yeah, say that I'm open for new opportunities and I don't have to know it all right now. And I think there is this beautiful, beautiful curiosity and lightheartedness um, around the Gemini full moon, which is on November 27th, that we can really, yeah, meet ourselves and meet others with openness, with open-mindedness, with curiosity. Um, and really see new opportunities, see new ways how we can think, how we can act, how we can live. And that can come with grief. So there is a certain degree of grief and sadness that maybe, or maybe even disappointment, that we must let go of certain beliefs, of certain world worldviews, so that we can continue our journey in a more aligned way and in a way that brings us more expansion and growth. And that is really in alignment with our truth. I think that at the beginning of Sagittarius season, we have the Saturn um, square, which is really, yeah, which can feel a little bit like the pressure to do all the things, to know it all. And where really this, I think, expansion can come when we say, okay, I am showing up with my full integrity and I say, I don't know, and I'm open for new solutions. And then we have this um, Neptune. So the sun squares Neptune in Pisces at the end of Sagittarius season. And there can be a certain degree of confusion, disillusionment, maybe disappointment. Maybe we could doubt our own way. We could doubt the meaning of our life with Neptune. And or at the same time, we can let go of certain beliefs and worldviews and open up to a bigger truth and even more alignment. So I think with Neptune, it's often that um, we feel really confused and disappointed and disillusioned. And this is part of the way and we must um, feel disappointed and disillusioned so that we, so th there is this, this idea of, um, yeah, lifting the wheel so that we can actually see what is even more in alignment and what is a bigger truth for us. And at the beginning and at the end of Sagittarius season with this Neptune square uh, around December 17th, I think there are maybe there there are some days um, that might be very important um, for you where you see, ah, okay, I thought about myself or about another person or about my mission or my work or my project or my business in a certain way and it's actually not and that feels really really disappointing and or I have actually no idea what is going on and I have the feeling of completely losing my track and I think then it's really important to surrender and to trust and to really um, trust a little bit in divine timing, trust that over time the answers will come, trust that this is maybe a redirection onto a path that is even more expansive and more in alignment and brings, brings you more growth than you thought. Because often it's that we think we know what is right for us and Neptune transits always teach us or often teach us that maybe what you thought is good for you is actually not your true path. And there is something bigger waiting for you, something, something more truthful waiting for you. And 
to follow this or to live this or to embody this, you have to let go a certain belief, a certain relationship, a certain life path even. And um, this feels really, really hard and Neptune transits are not fun. So, um, I mean, it's just Sun Square Neptune. So it's not a super long lasting transit. It's a couple of days, but I think there might be a turning point. And I mean, two days before that, the sun trying to the north node. So we had this dynamic of sun trying to north node in Aries and sun square Neptune. So maybe that Aries, our authenticity, our self-leadership, that we really experience, okay, it's actually not what I thought, what I will do, but wow, I trust the flow and I move forward and I don't doubt my whole life and I'm brave, Aries, and take this next next step and see what's showing up and see what these experiences might bring up for me and maybe they bring me more knowledge and wisdom about myself, about my own life path, about my mission, about my visions. So, yeah, I think this is um, the storyline, in a way, of the Sagittarius season to really start maybe with doubts, with the feeling of, okay, I have to do it all, I have to know it all, and then really open up to new possibilities and um, maybe with some disillusionment and disappointment, find new ways, um, find new visions, find new directions or new facets of the things that you thought are fixed. So there is a mutable energy in the field. And um, especially with Jupiter, ruler of Sagittarius and Taurus, with Venus and Scorpio, with Mercury station retrograde, the Sagittarius season, it's really, really important to not get lost in fear of missing out, in escapism, because you don't want to look into your depths. So you escape in doing, 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 um, yeah, running from one occasion to another. So it's really about finding the balance between the inner guru, the inner guidance, and the willingness to make new experiences, and also a certain degree of and braveness, braveness to meet yourself anew, to meet other people in a new way. The braveness that your truth can change and that what you think is um, important for you might change because we changed so much in this year. So allow yourself to be very curious towards yourself and towards others um, and be very, very self-honest. I think with Venus and Scorpio, it's so much about this self-honesty. So what do I truly want? What do I truly desire? Where am I maybe running away because I'm afraid? Um, which opportunities are really in alignment with me? and which opportunities are maybe more like shiny objects and is it possible for me to stay focused and at the same time expand my mind can i listen to my inner guidance while staying for, open for new opportunities can i follow my visions while surrendering to the flow yeah i think these are yeah some ideas for you. Um, again, this image of young energy, fire energy moving out, but cycling back all the time. So Mercury retrograde and all these things really about this, finding your inner focus, finding what is true for you, what feels good, what is within your capacity, what serves you over, over a longer period of time. And also being open 
to new worldviews, to new perspectives onto yourself too. Yes, and yeah, with Sagittarius, it's really important that um, we don't confuse our personal truth with the ultimate truth. So um, it's very important to be very respectful against other people or towards other people so that you allow yourself to change your mind, allow yourself to yeah, say, okay, that's actually no longer true for me. And now I'm finding out that this or that is more in alignment with me. And when I'm really self-honest, I actually don't want to do X, Y, Z any longer. And now I'm really feeling that I want to do this and allow others to do the same. So allow yourself to change what is true and honest and uh, true and important for you and allow others to do the same. And it's a mutable energy. So changes, we cannot avoid it, I think. But yeah, stay grounded during the next weeks. I think that's really important with mutable fire to stay grounded and to connect with the inner knowledge, the gnosis, which is Sagittarius energy in its purest essence. This, my inner guidance leads me outside. So it's really this, this fire that comes from your, from your core and from your sacral and pulls you into new directions and pulls you on your way. But it's, it's a pull that comes more from the inside than the outside. Mm, especially with Jupiter and Taurus. Um, yeah, if you are interested, so Sagittarius is about expanding and gaining new visions and gaining new self and life concepts. If you are interested to, yeah, maybe gain more clarity about your own path, about your own mission, but also about your own self and about your journey, I highly recommend you to book a one-on-one -on -one evolutionary astrology se session with me. We look at your soul's past so that you can yeah, create your life in the here and now with more consciousness and you can create your future with more consciousness. And these evolutionary astrology readings are really yeah so, so supportive and helpful to gain a new perspective on this lifetime in the context of your soul's evolution over many lifetimes. And in December and January, I am offering year ahead readings. So you can book a, a normal one-on-one -on -one evolutionary astrology session. And then um, you can fill out the form and say year ahead reading. And then we can look at all the transits and the energies in 2024 that are important for your personal journey. And we find out and you gain clarity how you can unlock the biggest potential of 2024 for your own growth and for your own journey, for your life, for your work, for your relationships, etc. Um, I'm offering these one-on-one -on -one, um, sessions in English language and in German language. And you find the link to my one-on-one -on -one sessions in the show notes. And also, if you want to open up to new visions and new opportunities and really expanding your horizon, I highly re recommend you my Astrology of 2024 video course. This is in German language and it's um, yeah, a package of several videos plus a workbook about the most important transits and energies in 2024. So, and I dive really deep into the energies and this is not only um, very helpful, supportive and fun if you want to feel into 2024 and what is important for your personal life and what topics um, maybe, um, yeah, what topics are more challenging and what topics can bring you expansion. It is also super, super helpful if you work as a spiritual entrepreneur, if you are a coach, a healer, a space holder, and because then you know 
already know at the beginning of the year what topics and themes will be in the field and will also be important for your clients. And so you can already create and plan your offerings, your courses, your classes um, in alignment with the energies of 2024. How cool is that? And also, you can make a little business planning so that you maybe don't launch the biggest project of the year when Mars is stationing retrograde. And um, so you can really, yeah, look ahead and do a little planning and feel into the energies and create offerings and um, that are really in alignment with the topics that will be in the field and important for um, every individual person, but also the collective. And um, yeah, if you find more information about this uh, astrology of 2024 video package in the show notes, notes too. And um, I will share more about, I share always more about astrological transits and the moon energies and so on in my, on my Instagram channel. Um, so you can follow me at Verina Borel. And yeah, you can sign up for my newsletter. Um, you find the information in the show notes as well. And there's also a free gift that I'm offering, my free Venus guide. It's in English or in German language. And you find the link to the free Venus guide in the show notes as well. So I'm so happy that you watched this video. Please like the video if you liked it. Please subscribe to my channel if you like my approach to astrology. Um, please leave me a comment. Please share the video. And yeah, I wish you to have a very expansive and also grounded Sagittarius season. And yeah, take exquisitely good care of yourself. And um, yeah, have a good time and experience the Sagittarius season in a conscious way. And don't forget to regularly drop in and listen to your inner guidance um, because I think this is so, 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 so important, especially in the mutable fire season of Sagittarius. Thank you so much. <laughs>